Hey guys and welcome back to another Element video tutorial. This time I'm going to show you what uh, all the internal, whoops, let's get Rove over out of there, what the internal plugins or nodes are in Element. So Element does come with its own internal nodes and specialty plugins and I'm just going to go down the list here and explain what they are in a general sense and then in the future we'll have videos breaking each and every one of these down uh, and how to use them but this is just to explain in a, at a general sense what it is so the first one is an all pass filter and this is kind of like a delay but you can use these in making like reverbs and stuff like that if you if you're trying to build some custom uh, filtering and, and things like that with element so that's what that is the audio mixer that is literally an audio mixer it's uh, four channels stereo channels with a master fader and uh, yeah this needs an overhaul it's, it's gonna look better in the future uh, there's an audio router. Uh, this is an embedded patch bay interface. So it's, uh, it's got four ins, four outs. Uh, we can probably do more than that. Whoop, I deleted the wrong one. Sorry about that. Let me bring that audio router back. Audio router. It keeps opening these on my other screen too. So uh, four ins, four outs, and it's exactly what you think it is. It's a patch bay. And uh, you can act, you can map these to MIDI programs over here, which is actually really really convenient for live switching. And when patches change, they do actually crossfade uh, uh, in and out of one another. So this thing does not pop when you change patches, and that is a very very nice very nice feature. And let's see what do we got next? The comb filter. A comb filter is literally a delay uh, and this is another one of those building blocks for things like if you want to create your own delay or build out a reverb or something like that. Uh, the next one is just a real simple reverb plugin. Uh, you know, it's the built-in reverb of Element. Uh, I think every DAW in the world has a built-in reverb, so that's what that is. Uh, the graph internal plugin. Now there will be a, definitely a video on this in the future, but this is nested graphs. So when you go inside of this, you double click on it, you get a whole new graph. And whatever you put in here, whoop, let me go back to the first one, will be just kind of condensed in here. So it's a way of, you know, if you have complex setups, you can condense them down and uh, and work with them like that. And you can even save these and bring them in uh, from other places. I'll just show real quick. I'm sure I have some graphs here. Uh, actually, here's my SR42 reverb graph. I'll just bring that in. So this is a graph internal plugin. And when you go into it, you know, it's got all these comb filters and all pass and yeah this thing is actually a working reverb right here using the wet dry a volume here's my two all passes uh, actually what i was trying to do here is mock exactly what roboverb does but anyway i don't want to get off topic there um, that's your nested graphs next on the list is a media player that's uh, at this point in time it's really just an audio file player so you can load up an audio file and play it and loop it uh, whatever you need it for reference tracks trick uh, tick track um, <clears throat> MIDI channel map that will take the input MIDI channels and convert them to another MIDI channel the MIDI channel splitter will uh, I'll just show that one real quick so you have an input MIDI here and then it then it has outputs corresponding to channels so it's just a way of getting another way of routing around MIDI by channel so like this pin will be channel 16 this port is channel 1 and you can do whatever you want with there uh, going down the list MIDI channelize is the same thing as a MIDI channel map except it's going to convert all channels coming in to a single channel going out 
uh, MIDI program map is the same as MIDI channel map, except it maps MIDI programs coming in to MIDI program numbers going out. And you know, some people have specific uh, uses for that. Um, and a placeholder node, this uh, actually doesn't do anything whatsoever, <laughs> which seems kind of weird. But the kind of the point of this one is, is to if you want to build out a template graph and then go into the, your placeholders and replace them later with, you know, whatever. So that's kind of what that is. You can build out templates and then quickly go in and change, change all the placeholders to something else. And then another thing about placeholders is those will pop in if by chance a plugin is missing on your system, you know, you delete some VSTs and then load up a session and those plugins aren't there anymore. Uh, placeholders will go in, in their place so that, you know, your graphs don't get all messed up just because of a missing plugin. Uh, the next is volume, mono, and stereo. That's exactly what you think it is. It's a single fader and it controls volume. And then wet dry is kind of like uh, the same thing as volume, except there's two, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's got a wet level and a dry level. So these inputs here, that's your wet. And then these inputs here are your dry. And then the result coming out. So, and you saw in this SR42 reverb, that's what we're doing here. See the dry level comes from the input and then goes into the dry. And then the wet is the, this whole array of filtering. So I hope that kind of explains a little bit of what the internal plugins, you may not even have known that those were there. Um, as time goes on, there's gonna be many, many, many more internal nodes. Um, almost every single feature in Element is going to be internal nodes. Uh, kind of the whole point of this thing is to build out what you need it to do. And uh, so we're getting there. And yeah, I, ho I hope that helps. So thanks for watching this one and stay tuned for another Element video tutorial coming up real soon. Peace.